uh, is my screen visible right yes sir okay so hi i'm abhishek sharma i work with object automation i research in different areas mostly related to ai and edge computing and cloud computing so all those areas related to azure and uh, how we can implement different solutions related to ai also we work with the technology related to the electronics part of it so how we can design some necessary related to ai or we can implement some uh, instruction set and what are the instruction set possible to speed up the ai related stuff so these things we are working as uh, as 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 a team or i am working in these areas so today's presentation is about an overview of soc like what is an soc a basic idea of it how it evolved over time and what is a kind of technical definition of it and then there is a very gray area where now everything is an soc and everything is not an soc in in in, in a general term and if you want to design an soc so what are the uh, bare minimum components you require to design those soc or that minimum soc with uh, minimum functionality so what are the options available and how we are going to develop that soc and then in the end like what is the market for it and uh, how it is going what are its requirement so recently you uh, you, you guys might have seen in the news that uh, there is a lack of uh, chips in the market there is a scarcity and the production is going down in uh, automobile sectors there is a waiting queue in the cars and uh, everywhere there is a shortage of soc so our government come with some plan uh, which is chip to start up and it it is just uh, pushing so that we can so that india can also produce its own chip not not start from uh, developing a computer chip or a laptop chip or a mobile chip we can start from developing uh, of a chip of a let us suppose of a fan or a ac or a car so that level so government is pushing hard to develop uh, soc or a chip semiconductor uh, like uh, supporting the semiconductor industry in the india so all these things i'll talk about so in the soc uh, like i'll talk about what is a basic model of an soc what are its component and what are its basic element and what is the basic design flow if you want to implement that soc right so what's an soc system on a chip if we talk about like what it is actually so basically when an ic it has the computational power like some cpu or a processor or a microprocessor integrated or combined with other components like memory io or some kind of gpu or some kind of con connectivity uh, encoders decoders everything so that becomes an soc like not just the processor but other other components also so we see or we find soc everywhere it is in our laptop it is in our mobile it is in in our ac in our fridge and today soc is everywhere for an example uh, like today if a car is built the 40 50% component is electronics most of the components coming from the electronics and soc part of it if that car is from let us suppose 20 years back from 20 uh, let, uh, like 1990 or 2000 so 70 80% car is mechanical engineering maybe 10% is the electronics engineering or chips inside it what are the different chips inside it and what they handle but today if we see there is a there there is a ev boom and in that ev we need lot of different kinds of issues maybe we need controller to handle the battery temperature or we may need uh, ic to manage or chip or soc to manage other components of a car like a electronic system the speaker system the ac the air flow all this thing so we need such soc which can perform all the task so it started with like a cpu so in the early early time uh, like 3 4 decades back in 1970s or 60s we are 
what happened is initially microprocessor or processor came so it was a single unit which was meant to do some computational thing so suppose you are you are want to want a processor which can multiply two numbers okay so that that unit was a processor, but it is it was not attached to anything. Like we have to attach with some memory from where you could enter those numbers, and also you want to have some I/O devices, I/O connectivity, or a display connectivity with that processor, so that can build a system. Like from microprocessor to build some system from where you can take the input and produce some output. But today we see that uh, in an associate, especially from the point of uh, mobile or a laptop, it has integrated GPU, integrated memory sometimes. We have a USB controller, power controller, power management, all the wireless radios are there in, in, the, in the mobile also. Only we don't have to connect externally something. 4G, 5G, 3G, it's not that it's it's in the ASIC design only, in that IC only, in that SOC only. So you cannot upgrade it, degrade it. This is the fundamental flaw, or you could say the disadvantage of that SOC, that you cannot upgrade or degrade that SOC as per your wish. So yeah, that is that is what SOC is. And one thing also, like the disadvantage of one SOC is that also that if that SOC gets old or you need to increase the power or you need to increase the computational thing, you have to develop new SOC from the scratch or buy the new SOC. You, get, you have to throw that SOC which has everything integrated. So there is, let us suppose there is a uh, connectivity in that and you want advanced connectivity, advanced, advanced IO connectivity, uh, some kind of, uh, you could say protocol is developed or Bluetooth technology is developed. So if that SOC, suppose in your phone, you have 4G, you cannot integrate it with 5G because it's a part of your SOC. For, to go to 4G from a 5G, you have to build a new SOC or you have to like buy a new SOC. When 4G phone came, the 3G phones, they become obsolete or like they, they got, they become old technology and all those SOC got wasted. So this is what an SOC is and uh, if we see from the point of like what are the types of SOC because we are talking about uh, a chip with, with not only the processor with other things also. So we have like small microcontrollers for from uh, SMT or Atmel, Atmega, all those Broadcom. These companies produce small microcontrollers but these microcontrollers has not just the CPU, but the the code, the, the memory to reside your code or the components or some kind of peripheral connectivity or the RAM, all those things were there. So you can perform the basic task like a basic robot or you can make some uh, smart AC with that or a smart fridge or any type of robotic word you can do. You can make a drone of that microcontroller, right? And then we have processor but that those processor is not uh, integrated with other stuff so we see processor in our mobile these are called mobile processors so in our laptop the processor from intel or amd these are called ultra low power mobile processor and it's all also in an soc we have processor in our mobile uh, it has other components like your uh, modem of 4g 5g your bluetooth or any encoder decoder specific video decoder like AVIF, AV1, all those things. But it it is meant for some higher computational thing and the memory is generally not integrated with it. So you have your separate, uh, you could storage is roughly the separate. And third type of SOC we generally say is like very specific dedicated SOC for some specific computational thing. So we have SOCs for, uh, let us suppose inside an, uh, inside a uh, storage. So we have uh, hard disk or SOCD. Inside that we have storage controller. So what it does is,
so what it does is it control or manage the data flow from that hard disk or the uh, the ssg the uh, if it is a ssd then the, the, then it is a silicon or the magnetic tape if it is if it is a hard disk or old hard disk so there is a storage controller inside your hard disk or ssd similarly we have chips or uh, uh, your inside your uh, any kind of component like your bluetooth earbud ha will have an soc or your uh, ac will have an soc and the purpose is very limited or decided and also uh, currently we see dedicated soc for uh, neural network the ai thing so google is building one c for ai we have to do lot of computational thing and that to do parallelly like uh, multiply uh, billions of number but the task is simple like we have to do just the multiplication or the matrix multiplication but we have to do it parallelly because there are a lot of matrices are there so for that we can build an soc meant for neural network also so today if you see there are companies they are building chips dedicated to train a neural network because if you do that with cpu or a normal soc inside a laptop or a mobile what happens is the soc and that soc is very, SOC is very complex so you have all kinds of instruction legacy instructions from 1970s or 80s uh, your soc support the new instructions are there like vector type of instructions or advanced instruction also intel is introducing the instruction for neural network training capability but since it's a complex soc it, it will be very slow to train an ai model but if you can build one soc only for the ai model training for ai model that is a asic specific soc or like uh, similar like that for any simple purpose you want to build one soc so suppose you want to build a video decoder or an encoder that is a asic specific so you want to give a data stream and that video uh, encoded video you will get the decoded video of the format be it AV, AV1 which is like one of the advanced and latest MP4 or MP3 so these are like application specific SOCs uh, okay why my system is not moving okay so if I talk of a chip or a SOC what are its basic components or model it has a media processor generally to encode or decode some kind of uh, video to give you graphics so my soc the soc inside my laptop it will have some gpu to show you this graphics so that is your media uh, encoder then it will have a memory to connect with uh, uh, so that our, so that the processor could connect with the addresses and find the uh, find what what is to be done and where to store the data and then we have the other components system components io components like thousands of things are there we have analog capability signal capability and we also have other things like vector coprocessor so there are vector instruction which is a part of our processor so this is this is a basic flow or a basic di diagram of an soc now if i talk of right uh, SOC and I compared it with a normal processor. So, a SOC, a design of FS, if you are trying to build an SOC, or what's happening is it's going in two direction. One, we want that everything should be inside one SOC only. So, the latest and most advanced example is from Apple Silicon. So, Apple built this. Uh, m1 chip for its laptop or its mobile so generally in soc we don't include uh, for laptop or mobile we don't include the storage but they have this integrated storage and everything they have this video decoding encoding from their side as a hardware uh, capability so you don't have to provide a software to decode the video because they have their 
everything proprietary. They have this, uh, you could say, uh, HEIV, I think is the video, video, record, video recording and de decoding encoding. They have done this hardware wise. So this is the one direction that you want everything inside an SOC, like from uh, from processor to memory to storage uh, to IO thing to video encoding to neural network to uh, like let us suppose you are you have built an uh, NLP model uh, a model which recognize your speech dedicate speech neural uh, what's called as um, natural language processing so if that model is not the software or it's not in the form of uh, you could say a code but a hardware hardware level encoding decoding is there but that would be much faster and better so that is one direction the second direction in the associate design is that we can include as much as processor and as much as cache with it so a lot of processor cores and a lot of cache just to increase the computational power and not caring for other things so for an example we want larger gpus larger cpus better gpus more like with more cores with hundreds and thousands and maybe more than that so that level of thing we want with the gpu so that we could train our ai model or we can do uh, cryptocurrency mining or if we can uh, support a crypto network or a uh, blockchain so that we can uh, use that in a blockchain. Yeah, blockchain is also one area where we can build one uh, dedicated SOC, especially for hashing and dehashing from the uh, of the blockchain. So if, if someone has like studied or understood blockchain, we do a lot of calculation, basically the hashing in, in that and we can build a dedicated chip for to do that so that that would take less power and that would speed up the hashing or uh, for the blockchain so yeah these are the two directions one is having more processor or more core another is your the complete system in one chip so if i if if, if i see this diagram so although the line is blurred now but in a system or a chip, you have generally a simple processor like your uh, a microcontroller, right? But if I say talk about only the processor from Intel for, for our desktop, it's very complex. It is heterogeneous, like it will have many type of instruction and it will do almost everything you want to do from a processor so uh, a simple soc might not able to do a lot of things but a processor will be able to do second we have uh, the cache the cache in the soc is only one level so memory access by the processor uh, to and to and fro like it's 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 very small and it's at the one level and in the processor we have the multi-level cache like two level three level. generally there are level three caches the cache is the memory or the storage that uh, processor access for read and write uh, like in gigahertz so in the our, our laptop processor work in two gigahertz so it has to read and write in gigahertz uh, in that frequency gigabytes so that level of speed is not easily provided and we need even from more than that like a ram is not even that fast cache is much faster even from the ram and then the soc it's a it's a chip embedded chip meant for some embedded work do robotic work make a drone make a uh, uh, like a system any kind of electronic circuit you can build up that soc so it's a very special purpose like limited purpose you could say not the special and for the processor it's a very general processor you can do almost everything from a laptop processor or a desktop processor right and as soc work stand alone like it has memory in built inside it like most of the time uh, we have microcontrollers and it has the memory inside it 
okay and in the processor we don't have uh, enough we, do, we don't have basically ram or storage in the processor we have other uh, capabilities or include other capabilities so that our processor could run right so uh, uh, after talk, briefly talking about a general understanding of the soc uh, we have I, as i talked before we have soc everywhere like we know all this is the example of the mobile companies which make mobiles and they all have snapdragon and mediatek based processor and if you notice one thing uh, it might have written it's a arm based cpu core um let's check that okay they have not written but yeah the the cpu that's inside the almost every mobile is arm based even small small chips that company makes for certain purposes the architecture is from generally from arm uh, like your uh, apple makes your home pod or your ear pod or your apple watch those processor use arm architecture and they they are proprietary like they have apple has to give the licensing licensing fee to the arm and then apple can use that so if you see this soc it has the cpu and a gpu and a disk signal processor and connectivity like 4g wi-fi bluetooth fm usb gps it has a display controller it has all kind of sensors it might be your compass sensor magnetometer barometer uh, your uh, accelerometer all those com com uh, sensors are there and then you have the multimedia so if you want to take a photo or a, take a video so that video will be not stored like uh, in a original store like a, a video is very large file it is encoded and decoded in mp4 or mp3 or whatever the uh, the format you want so even a m audio file which is a mp3 file it's not it's stored by comp compressing and decompressing so all these things we have the multimedia uh, related stuff here for camera or video related thing so yeah this is one soc inside all our mobile basically every company from motorola oppo vivo lenovo all these companies make soc based on qualcomm or mediatek and they they take the license from arm to build those soc like till now no big company or not a successful mobile company has built one although intel has tried before or nvidia has tried before to build one soc for the mobile but it was not successful so for android we have uh, qualcomm and mediatek and they are using the arm licensing and apple is also using the arm licensing apple although apple says it does everything but it does not it takes licenses this is a uh, second example of an soc which is your raspberry pi board uh, you can see it's written here raspberry pi 3 so it's a single board uh, single chip board which which can be used to do multiple thing uh, you can connect with peripheral even you can connect with your display you can also ins install some kind of license uh, linux in that and do whatever things you want maybe some kind of uh, uh, testing work you want to do so you can use this raspberry pi raspberry pi I, I believe most of the electronics people know and then they have worked with it they have ported it so in that we have the broadcom processor right so uh, this one is having I think, bcm 2835 soc and uh, this soc also have some gpu support opengl and video encoder decoder 1080p and then we have audio support we have sdmi support we have other type of uh, support like serial peripheral interface 
and i2 i2c support like enter ic connect matlab uh, it's like interconnect and then uart communication all the things are there in that soc so this is the soc so my point is here that uh please share one second all slides sir please if possible okay i'll, I'll share all the slides yeah sure I'll, uh, what do you want to say like share the slides uh arm has a instruction six so um develop the you could say on paper instruction how your soc can work like it provides different type of architecture and pipelining uh, it is cortex based cortex m cortex uh, a53 a52 a73 a72 all this thing arm um, provide like, like give the license now if apple wants to build an soc so apple has to apple might have the knowledge that how does a cortex a73 works but apple has to give the royalty free to the royalty fee to the arm to use that because arm arm does not make processor it just provide the logic like a instruction set and the logic behind a processor so suppose i give you uh, a logic like how does a processor should work and what is the pipeline how is the data should go how the data should come what are the different uh, arbiter marks what are different uh, things all those things like in a in a complex processor it's, it's a risk based processor arm started as a risk based and uh, you might be knowing that intel was cisc complex instruction set and arm started as reducing those instruction set but within that time like within all those years of last 3 4 uh, 3 4 decades the line got blurred so over the years arm has taken uh, taken some ideas from the intel intel has taken ideas from the arm and both now both are very complex so arm is not simple the risk is not actually that simple so uh, what i want to say here that suppose this is your raspberry pi and this is one board single board computer and in that you can do multiple thing but the processor is from broadcom and when broadcom built built this processor it took the processor core from the arm not the core it it took the idea like how does a arm uh, processor should work and to it took the licensing licensing from the arm and then it built it its own processor and its own soc complete soc it's bcm2835 soc right um yeah so after uh, the raspberry pi we have apple silicon so what all apple makes like its chip it takes the license from arm only to make those processor core and then what all it wants to put inside its soc support is want to uh, put a specific encoder or a specific uh, uh, you could say voice decoder specific isp all those things so apple decided like apple decide what it wants then it build its own soc so apple apple's soc is called as apple silicon and apple's soc is one of the like you could say closed ecosystem soc with least amount of outside knowledge like little people outside the world know that how and what things and how they are working because you cannot go at a transistor level and uh, do the reverse engineering right like you cannot see the transistor and do that so how they have designed and all those things it's really tough to get into that but yeah apple takes the instruction set or you could they the 
you could say you, you, you could say that they also use the arm architecture for their uh, latest laptop uh, or latest chip like m11 for the laptop they use uh, arm 73 a73 core cortex a73 a75 a77 i don't know like what's the number but a77 is the number i think uh, then we have uh, soc from uh, nvidia so nvidia made uh, its own soc and for that uh, it made a gpu like a maxwell gpu to be used in Nintend, uh, nintendo switch right? it's a gaming console so you can play with it you can play the games and this gpu it was like i i know that this is this was made by the uh, the nvidia only like nvidia is pioneer in uh, designing graphics card or gra gpu related thing but it also used uh, cortex a57 a53 these are the computational cores and this was also taken from the arm only so arm actually getting lot of licensing fees just just uh, uh, just giving the idea like how you can build those processor or just giving their instruction set so there are other thing also like display controller memory controller you have uh, memory storage type you have isp audio engine dual display all those things are there in the soc in this uh, nintendo switch soc by the nvidia tegra s1 so if i see there are 256 core maxwell gpu built by the nvidia and uh, if someone knows like for a gpu we need a lot of parallel processing and that's why gpu are useful for ai modeling because in ai model we also need a lot of parallel matrix multiplication so nvidia like it's a old associate was built i think three three four four five years back i think uh, nintendo switch was uh, four year four year old version I, i'm not sure the, about the year so you can see that there are four performance cores a57 from the arm there are four efficiency cores a53 from the arm then other stuff like memory controller display controller usb3 compatibility dual uh, dual display audio engine all these things are uh, are inside this nvidia tegra x1 processor which is inside your nintendo switch now this is not a simple soc it's a very complex soc like every soc till now i'm telling like these soc from apple or nvidia all these functions are inside in, inside one silicon one die one you could say semiconductor it's not that they are connected so this this all these features are inside one soc so soc can, can go from a very basic computational thing which can do maybe some kind of multi multiplication or some computational thing or to a level which can do a lot of big tasks like gpu related thing where you can have you can play high end games so it start it's from there to here so this is the actual diagram of uh, this tegra x1 and i think mm, it's not possible to see all the components but there are lot of components inside it like thousands of components and buses and uh, different types of uh, controllers to do that and it's not just one component if is they, they all work in sync like it's they are so complex but they work in uh, sync like they, they, they are integrated well so that they can function and give you output or make you play play a game in this soc right so uh, what i wanted to say here that if you have built one component or a one module it's not like you have to build it from scratch so if there is some sub component or you could say sub soc or some, some kind of uh, controller 
or some kind of system you have built or encoder you have built you can reuse those things and you can reuse your th those cores and those controllers that is called as ip cores intel uh, intellectual property cores and that collection can be used to make a complex soc right so when you build a soc in a uh, in a single chip like all these components you are trying to build you can use multiple basic elements which are already available or built and these are called ip cores also when you build those uh, element you have you need right tools to integrate all of them and uh, you have to like formally verify it that whether this component is working fine or is it producing the required output or not or is it, uh, it like the way it is integrated with our module is right or not all those things should be there like a formal verification of all the uh, design digital design and ASIC, ASIC chip is there so you have your ip cores which are already built uh, produced tested formally verified and you can integrate those ip cores to build your uh, bigger chip you could say or bigger soc right there are components there are modules to build that soc if i talk of basic or uh, base element of an soc if you want to build one let us suppose you want to build one what are the minimum things you want to have in your soc so first one is your clock so every soc work uh, with some clock frequency so that that provides its pulse at that rate it it does thing like at that rate it uh, computes or uh, access the data or access the storage or do some kind of multiplication all the things or even uh, uh, or integrate to io like uh, make uh, make two ios uh, talk with each other all those things uh, in is in, in sync with the clock so that one component that we have to build second component the basic component is the cpu like you want a execution unit which can do basic operation with the operand so you want a multiplication or you want to fetch the data from the address or you want to uh, let us suppose do a matrix multiplication or some kind of vector instructions are there in the soc so you want, if you want all those things like the cpu is the core or the brain or the execution of the soc without the cpu you cannot have an soc then there are different interconnects which i talked about talk about like memory map interconnect or streaming interconnect then dma direct memory access i2c uh, inter ic interconnect like it, it's a simple one and spi uh, serial peripheral interface all these are the basic elements of of an soc so i'll talk about all these components briefly like what are these and how they work and then i'll i'll talk about uh, like what's the tools with you can build or what are the ways you can build an soc so the first element is your your clock right so all the system it work with some clock it is in synchronous or is in sync with that clock but it is possible that multiple components inside one soc they require different clocks so suppose uh, your crystal oscillator it is producing uh, 500 megahertz but there is one component which works with uh, 50 megahertz so you you cannot have multiple crystal oscillator inside your soc or you can like put the number of uh, like as many crystal oscillator as number of frequencies you want uh, this is not how like we design what we do we develop a phase uh, locked loop so it's a pll synthesizer and i see diagram and what this pll do it basically uh, 
produce different clocks for the different component so if there is a component which works like your 30 megahertz 80 megahertz and all those components needs different uh, frequency and your crystal oscillator is producing let us suppose uh, 500 megahertz so this particular ic will produce uh, different clocks for different uh, components and you can integrate those component with your soc so it's basic diagram like basic flow that i'm telling uh, pll synthesizer ic or phased log loop circuits these circuits are meant to generate different clock frequencies basically uh, i we have a r divider and a phase reductor and we have a feedback loop in, in this so basically it's an internal circuit of an ic but uh, the idea is that from one crystal os oscillator you, you are going to develop multiple uh, frequencies second is the cpu um, i'll take the questions later and divider is used to control the output frequency which divider you are talking there are multiple types of dividers I don't know why my system is i'll take the questions later okay so we have the cpu right and it is the uh, execution unit it performs the basic task and as i explained before or uh, told before that most of the uh, processor they use arm cpu or arm cortex licensing uh, arm instruction set is it good is it bad i believe that it should not have been happened because for some reason like arm was able to generate lot of royalty money uh, just giving its its ip its instruction set to the companies because like it's a one step ahead of all or ahead of others and even the small small embedded chips so something like uh, i showed you the raspberry pi board it has a small processor of broadcom it also used the arm even your apple if it makes your home pod or your air pod or anything so it use a arm arm processor and that for every arm based processor arm is getting some kind of royalty fee so uh, all these embedded system like they, they have this arm then we have open power and a risk free the good thing about now like uh, what's happening from last seven eight years or you could say 10 years that we have instruction set which is not property or which is not under anyone control so you can build one processor or an soc using those instruction set uh, that those instruction sets are provided by open power like open power is a 30 year old uh, instruction from ibm it ibm recently like three four years back made it open source so what we have now is power isa power isa 3.1 power isa uh, i think 20, 2021 we have power isa 3.1 and uh, using that we have power 10 processor from ibm so uh, we all know about amd processor or intel processors probably like but we also have power processors from ibm and they are really really good like these power processors have the uh, latest capabilities like pci gen 5 or uh, most advanced computational uh, computational speed so power processors are good and they used uh, power isa from upper power power foundation basically ibm developed it over the years and then made it open source because arm and intel they are some kind of uh, taking the advantage of their position you could say the second is the risk five so risk five is lot of uh, lot of development is going in the risk five currently and you might see that 
not a complete processor like a power open uh, power 9 power 10 but simple processor embedded chips or a uh, single board computer like raspberry pi there is i think mango pi or something which is developed using the risk 5 based uh, processor but what i think is that since risk 5 is relatively new or although risk 5 is 10 year old but it's in the uh, the development in the risk 5 is relatively new like like three four years so in future we might have conflicting patent issues with the things that got that will be developed in this fashion so that, that's my understanding that in near future you, you might see uh, a conflicting patent uh, patent issue so someone might have developed an soc uh, intel might have a patent for some kind of uh, design or app uh, arm might have some design or a uh, or you could say Huawei has some design or patent design or Apple has some design and they might like uh, come against the risk 5 because risk 5 is uh, open source and free but yes we can use these two instruction set power ISA and risk 5 and build our own tip and we don't have to pay anything to the instruction set maker like a arm because ARM is not open source and this file and power ISA is the open source. So uh, in a CPU, like I talked about CPU, so all these risk based CPU, uh, if basic stages, pipe, in a pipeline there are five stages basically, there are very, like I'm, I, I'm simplifying the system. It, it's not that simple, but I'm simplifying. First is your instruction fed, then is your instruction decode, then it is your execution unit, and then it's your memory map, and then your write. So uh, you have this bigger diagram where you can see how does a CPU plan basically work. So in the instruction fed stage, what we do, we provide the memory address to the uh, to the to, to the system like uh, where is the instruction and what is the address of it so that our instruction could get fetched and when it got fetched it goes to the decoding stage there uh, the system identify or the design identify that what we are going to do with this uh, you could say the system like what we are going to do with the instruction so instruction is let us suppose about uh, writing something or is it about multiplication of two operands or it is about uh, you could say a matrix multiplication vector instruction is there whatever the thing is there this stage will decode that instruction and then after decoding the instruction the next stage is execution stage so in the uh, decoding stage we have register files also so we have different registers where you might have different operands or uh, different uh, you could say we have data here and the next stage is the execution stage where we can perform the actual execution uh, where we can multiply the number of operands if it is or if it is about writing it into the memory so that we can directly write it into the memory or if the instruction is about writing back to the some register so this is the basic flow or you could say these are the basic five stages of designing a CPU pipeline and it's a simplified version. What all instructions you want to build, it's up to you. Uh, how complex you want to build, it's up to you. Uh, it's on the designer. Uh, it's on, it depends on your requirements, but this is how, 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 how a CPU is built, like a, a core processing unit is built. Second is your memory map interconnect. So memory map interconnect is basically you have communication between master and slave. So you might know that uh, to communicate between two master, like between a master and a slave, a master is a controller. So generally in a C, uh, in, in a process, in a chip, in a SOC, the processor is a master, right? 
generally it decide uh, with with whom it wants to communicate or it with whom it wants to send data and all those things so it's like a bus like, like communication through memory map is like a bus and we want to communicate with different slaves and also we have to build some arbiters here the functions of arbiter is that with what uh, slave you want to connect uh, the master has to connect it has to decide like there are many slaves they want to connect with the masters and they the communication can uh, happen from masters to many slaves right so arbiter is in between that uh, that master and the slave and it decides that with what uh, slave i will have to connect this with the master right so this is master slave communication and uh, in it's a memory mapped interconnect and if i talk about the available memory map in interconnect or the buses they are a x i it is from arm and it's supported by xilinx then we have avalon intel and we also have visborn so there is one soc i think you might have got some reference microwatt right open power power microwatt is it uses the visborn bus or uh, visborn uh, visborn open source bus to communicate between uh, the master and the slave and between the different uh, slaves and different peripherals and all those things generally the industry standard is xi4 from arm here also like uh, most of the soc they use axi4 it's an industry standard visbone is used in open source project so if you don't want to give any royalty again you can use the visbone in the recent time like since the open source soc uh, speed up ha has taken place from last few years visbone uh, like has taken some pace or people started using the visbone bus so from axi4 if you want to develop memory mapped inter interconnect you can use arm uh, axi from 4 from arm or avalon from intel visbone which is a open source okay so here it's a general diagram although i have written here it's a visborn read and write but like how does a master slave communication happen so a normal communication between two people how how does it happen like uh, for an example if i have to communicate with someone i have to initiate it like i have to say hi and hello and then the other person will respond so initially like i have to come up with some starting point some initiation of that communication like that this is the system is built in master slave communication we have to first uh, initiate that communication make our information ready make our data ready make make it valid and also make our address uh, ready okay and then we have to do the write enable and the acknowledgement so first we have to say, tell the slave that okay uh, i'm sending you some signal so what 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 i want to say that to do a master slave communication there are some signals that needed to be initiated um, Is there okay. okay so what i want to say here that if you want to communicate between a master and a slave so there are some signals that needed to be sent from master to slave and then we can do the communication something like i say hi and hello to someone and then someone will recognize okay now something will come from other side some kind of information and then we can exchange the information like that we have to make our data ready and the address ready and then we have to do the write enable like for example we have to 
tell the slave okay we are going to give you some information be ready and then we have the uh, acknowledgement signal so acknowledgement is like telling okay accept it and then we have strobe and clock cycle and all, all those things but uh, that i'll not tell strobe is like verifying your signal that uh, verifying your data uh, is it right or not it's not going yeah okay so yeah so strobe was your verifying your data like is, is it right or not so in the memory mapped interconnect generally the data that is sent is some kind of a batch data or some kind of unit of data you could say so it's not data is connect coming continuously so this is one element of a soc like you have to communicate with different slaves and uh, your master is generally your processor only but the data is your batch data some kind of unit some kind of uh, a fixed amount a, a, fix, a, a fixed size but sometime you want to have your stream data streaming coming like uh, you have in video streaming like in uh, you see youtube hotstar and uh, netflix all in all this space a uh, continuously data is coming so in that uh, you see here there is a difference uh, memory mapped interconnect and the streaming interconnect uh, this is the diagram we have the acknowledgement but in the streaming interconnect we don't have the acknowledgement once our system is ready we can directly send the data continuously and the system has to accept it because it's a streaming uh, in streaming the data is coming from a video stream let us suppose or an audio stream and it is coming continuously so you cannot stop it it's not a piece of information or a piece of data so if you build the streaming interconnect you have multiple masters and a multiple slaves like a, uh, you, you can think of a uh, plumbing like there are multiple uh, multiple tanks and multiple sinks are there so con to control that system like from multiple sources the the mul uh, multiple sinks to multiple sinks you need to have a good type of arbiter or a well defined system of arbiters which can decide or which can understand where the data should stream or should go right so this is your stream interconnect this is also a one type of element if you build a soc you have to include this uh, in the streaming interconnect so in the memory mapped interconnect i told it is axi4 from arm and ablon from intel and wisborn which is an open source in streaming interconnect we have the axi4 stream from arm again and ablon it is from intel uh, before it was ultra or it's intel and there is no open source standard so we have we have this response for memory mapped interconnect but here it's no open source standard uh, it is not it is not like that it's not possible to build one but currently we don't have any so if someone comes up with some streaming interconnect we can uh, open source so we can include that in our soc without any royalty free here you can see there are two signals one is your valid and uh, second is your ready signal so and there is no acknowledgement like that so uh, for if you send the valid signal and you send the ready signal what it means is that valid sender wants to transmit the data and if the receiver sent that signal that receiver is now able to send the uh, able to receive the data but here you can see the one is the high and here one is the low this 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 you might know that uh, low high and uh, low low one and high one is is, is the system so th it depends on the interconnect uh, what type of interconnect uh, the system is trying to build it's just an example here but valid is that sender wants to send the data and ready is the receiver the slave uh, is now able to receive the data and data is continuously flowing from a video stream from an audio stream 
or from anyone. So these are the streaming interconnects available. They are AXI4 or AVLON. Then we have direct memory access. So this direct memory access, uh, it's not like for a normal SOC, uh, if you are building a very simple computational thing, it's not required or I would say it's not come to uh, that level of simple level. So you can build an SOC without the direct memory access also. The purpose of direct memory access is to do the data transfer or the communication between IO to IO, IO to memory, memory to memory, memory to IO, all these things. So what happens is that suppose uh, you have a system or a mobile and it's doing the data transfer. So your mobile should work normally, like it should be able to communicate with uh, other things or you can make a call or conserve the internet. It should not like CPU should get involved by there is a memory transfer, right? So suppose I attach two pen drive in my laptop and what I do is I transfer data from one pen drive to other. So CPU should not get involved. So this kind of system like direct memory access is meant to do the memory to memory or a memory to IO, IO to memory and IO to IO all this memory or a data uh, like data transfer or connectivity system. So for an example, if I connect one drive with, uh, as an OTG in my mobile and I am transferring the data into the storage, but CPU should remain free. Although the storage uh, may bring some bottleneck or whatever the read and write speed of my NAND storage inside my mobile will be used or the, those limitations will be there. But this system like the copy from one memory to other memory will be done by this direct memory access and CPU should not be involved there, right? CPU should able to start this and should interrupt like CPU ultimately the control is with the CPU only but the work the transfer uh, all this done will be by this direct memory access. Other uh, interconnects is like your external interconnect so for an example we have PCI Express uh, if someone uh, understand that we have PCI Express Gen 3, Gen 4, now it's Gen 5. So we can uh, make some kind of connectivity like uh, for example GPU it's mostly meant for uh, faster speed. So GPU require a lot of uh, data transfer uh, to and fro like from from its side to the from its side to the system and to the system to to it to the GPU. So we can have something like an external in, uh, interconnect. So we can have for different purpose, different standards. So PCI Express is like your example. So if it has one lane, it will have one bit or uh, like one piece of in information, one cycle. And then we, we might have two, two lanes or four lanes or 12 lanes. We can have as many as lane possible and that lane will be uh, increase the speed of the data transfer. So this is one type of interconnect you have. Then we have uh, IC2 interconnect. It's a very simple interconnect. It's like inter, uh, inter uh, IC connect, uh, data transfer. So we can have multiple master and multiple slave and you can see there are two signals only SD and SCL and like mostly serial. So it's also one type of interconnect and then we have serial peripheral interface SPI like it's a very common uh, interface uh, type of interconnect we study in, uh, in, in, in books like it's a master in slave out master out slave in and if select so we, we, we basically have one master and multiple slave and through slave select we can select through which slave you want to communicate and then uh, then we have the uh, the data from master to the slave or the slave to the master so this is also one type of uh, element or interconnect you could say so these are the basic element 
of an associate design so it starts from your clocking and then you have to design your cpu architecture maybe the pipeline and then different type of interconnect from memory mapped interconnect to streamline interconnect then direct memory access and all those things so what all functionality you want to have okay so apart from this although i am uh, i'm out of time but one thing that i might have mentioned before about ip cores right so what happens is that when we build some kind of a soc we can use already built and verified and tested ip cores like simple cores for some built for some special functionalities like right so there are already available some cores you can use those and for an example we have uh, your microboard processor it uses some kind of ip core and you can use that in building in some soc or, or extending that soc right so it's a predefined verified reusable building block on, of an soc it's a technical definition but there can be multiple type of ip cores so for an example we can have a hard ip and we can have, have synthesized firm ip or synthesized soft ip so if i talk of hard ip customer customer customized hard ip what it means is that it is meant for some fixed process and the the level at which it is available is the chip or the ic for an example suppose we have a video decoder or an encoder so that ic cannot be used for other purpose you cannot modify a video decoder or an encoder ic to do some computational or make it decoding the audio so suppose we have a ic or a chip that decodes mp4 videos like a hardware encoder or a decoder so that's a physical level is there uh, from that hard ip so this is called a hard ip then we have uh, synthesized firm ip so that is the gate level design we have and we can use it uh, through multiple processes and uh, in multiple ways we can do some optimization in it and then we have synthesizable soft ip so the only difference between these two are that this soft ip is available at rtl level the uh, you could say we have a hardware level language so we have this at gate level we have this hardware level so we can use it accordingly what what we want right so this is the soft ip or different type of ip course that we have um i have some questions okay share the ppt okay right. okay so uh, i think i have other things also but i think i'll share the ppt uh if i talk of indian government uh, its support to the semiconductor industry so recently government has launched chip to startup program it has launched up at nirbhar electronics chip manufacturing and there is a significant growth in the uh, embedded chips or the socs so we are going to see a lot of chip inside our uh, inside everything so suppose you have a fan right now which is an electrical device now your next fan will be electronic device it might have a soc inside that will control its motor uh, dc motor so we we currently have such fans right now in the in the market so everything is going to be electronics and we, we might have soc inside every uh, soc inside every 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 device so i gave this example in the starting like uh, a, a car today is 50% electronics a car in the 90s or in early 2000 it was 80% mechanical thing 10 to 10 20% electronics thing but today when a new car is built using the ev technology most of the things are electronics inside it so most of the, we are going to have more and more chips inside more and more uh, dedicated or uh, you could say the uh, specific purpose asic or soc inside the uh, different ev or vehicle or for different purpose 
okay i'll end my presentation here any questions till now uh thank you so for the insightful uh insightful presentation i think it was a really great uh talk on soc and components of ip course uh thank you very much sir thank you very much uh, thanks for the opportunity